Welcome to Master Math. Today we're going to be talking about writing equations or writing equations with just one variable. Now Einstein could do this. You can see him doing it on the slide there. And guess what? You're going to be able to do it too. The first step is to learn to translate English into algebra. Now that sounds tough, but in most cases it's not that hard. You're going to get a problem and it's going to spell out in English what you're supposed to solve for. And you need to convert that English or translate that English into algebra. For instance, if the question said a number divided by 8 is 6, you couldn't do anything mathematically with that. You, you, you can't really solve for anything there. You need to translate it into algebra. And there's a number of elements that you could look at. It says a number, a number. Well, a number in this case is what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to figure out what number it is. So we'll just call that number x. Then it says divided by. Well, you know how to translate divided by. It's just the math symbol divided by. Next, it spells out the word 8. And you can translate that too. That's just the number 8. The next word is is. And you may need to remember this. When you see is in a problem like this, is should be translated into equals. And the last thing in this sentence is the number 6. And that really doesn't need translating because a 6 is the same in English and in math. So we could write, rewrite this equation as x divided by 8 equals 6. Now you try it. The sum of a number and 6 is 12. Hit your pause button try to translate this and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. A number, we'll call it x, plus 6 equals 12. Well, we've done some simple equation writing. Now let's see if we can get a little more sophisticated about this. We're going to use C U C C, and I've also added a V to the end of this. C U C C V. Now some of you know C U C C. Very few of you know C U C C V. So let's talk about what that means. C U C C stands for circle, underline, count, check. And then I've added a V, which means to add a variable. What's that all mean? Well, when you get to a word problem, the first thing you want to do is circle the numbers. Any number in that problem is going to be important. So let's circle it so we can focus on it. Next, you want to underline the question. A lot of times when students see a problem, they go off in, a, in the wrong direction and don't answer the question that's really being asked. So let's underline the question and make sure that we're answering the right question. You don't have to do much with count. Check though, when you finish you should check your answer and make sure it makes sense. Plug it back into the equation you created and see if it works. And then the V. Add a variable especially if you're doing a, a, an algebra problem, you're going to need a variable. You're going to need something to solve for. Let's see how this might work. If you had a, a question, a farmer sold 86 bushels of corn and tomatoes. He sold 26 bushels of corn. How many bushels of tomatoes did he sell? Well, you need to translate that into algebra in order to solve it. Now, some of you can do this in your head. But all you're doing is translating it into algebra, and you're going to come across some harder problems that uh, using this techniques are going to help you with. So let's translate it into algebra. First, we'll see UCC. 
a farmer sold 86, I'm going to circle that, 86 bushels of corn and tomatoes. He sold 26 bushels of corn. Now I'm going to underline the question, how many bushels of tomatoes did he sell? And I need a variable, and that variable is almost always the question. It's almost always in the question, at least. The question is, how many bushels of tomatoes did he sell? And let's call that X. X equals the number of bushels of tomatoes that he sold. Well, now you can look at this and say that he sold 86 bushels, and the 86 bushels were made up of the corn he sold plus the tomatoes he sold. You know how much corn he sold, and you're trying to solve for how many bushels of tomatoes did he sell. So you know that 86 would equal 26 plus X. 86 equals 26 plus X. And you'll be able to solve that. Now you try this one. Circle and underline, and you may have to do this in your head, and then come up with an expression that solves this problem. Hit your pause button, try it, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Dad says it's eight. Well, that, that's not a number, that's a word, but it means a number, so I'm gonna circle it. I'm gonna circle eight. Dad says it, it's eight hour, it's an eight hour drive to grandma's house and that you are now two thirds of the way there. Two thirds, that's another number. So I'm gonna circle two thirds. Grandma had promised to bake cookies and cakes and your favorite rhubarb pie. And she said that as soon as you got to her house, you could have some pie. Now there, there's a lot of words in there and, and we, we mathematicians and, and teachers throw those words in there just to confuse you for the most part. But if you circle the numbers, you're going to focus on what's important, and you're going to not focus on all the stuff that could just confuse you. Now you need to underline the question and create a variable. The question is, how long will it be before you have your pie? Let's call that X. X is how long you'll be before you have your pie. Well, it's an eight-hour trip to Grandma's, and you're now two-thirds of the way there. If you're two-thirds of the way there, you've got one-third of the, of the eight hours left to go. So you're one-third of eight hours away from grandma's in your pie. The equation would be eight times one-third equals x. Try this one. Write an equation of, for this problem. A number plus nine equals 22 and one-half. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. A number, well I'm going to circle that and that's going to be my variable, n. A number plus 9, I'm going to circle 9 because that's a number too, equals 22 and 1 half. n plus 9 equals 22 and 1 half. Well, that's our lesson on writing equations. I hope you learned a lot. Now, go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on solving or writing equations and try your luck there. Then, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on equations. I hope you had a good time. Come back and see us again soon.